Hey, guess what? Today we get to talk about punishment. I know it seems like a big scary topic, but guess what? If you have a child who has challenging behavior, this is an issue you're gonna run into. Uh, if your child is breaking the rules at school, what's gonna happen? Probably there's gonna be a punishment involved. If your child is getting older and starts to break some of society's rules, what's gonna happen? There's gonna be a justice system involved, and that's pretty much all about punishment. So what do you need to know about punishment, and how does it fit in to your life? Okay, so if you hang out on the internet for a little while and you listen to families talking about their kids and their difficult behavior, one thing you're gonna hear is, hey, you know, my child is yelling and refusing to do his homework. Anybody know a good punishment for that? That's not common in every single culture or level of society, but it's something that I hear over and over and over again. Uh, I've got a problem. Is there a punishment that works for this? And that doesn't surprise me because I think people misunderstand what behavior change is all about. They think it's about rewards, it's about punishments. Okay, well, I've set up some consequences and I've offered some rewards and he hasn't really responded and now I'm stuck and I don't know what to do. Maybe I'll just try a bigger punishment. Let's rewind. Let's go into a little bit what's actually happening when we're punishing children. And in particular, what do you need to know if your child has some of those differences like ADHD or some of the things that come along with oppositional defiant behavior? Why isn't it changing their behavior the way it's supposed to? Okay, so I've written a lot of notes. I'm just gonna check in and make sure that we're on the right track. Okay, so why do people punish? Well, as we talked about, it makes sense. Research actually shows that it, it makes the punisher feel a little bit better. And that, that kind of makes sense. We're sort of built for revenge, justice. But let's put that aside for a minute. Let's just sort of acknowledge that, okay, it's our default response. Okay, it feels good and it makes a certain amount of sense. But what's actually happening for the child? I'm gonna give you five things to consider when you're deciding whether or not to use a punishment in a situation. So here's what you need to know. Number one, punishment doesn't teach the replacement skill. So for example, uh, your child is in front of the house on his skateboard. He falls off and he turns to you and he calls you an idiot. This is totally inappropriate, right? And you could give him a punishment. You could say, all right, you're done skating. That would be a logical punishment but what's the missing skill? What's actually going on? Uh, well, what do you notice? He doesn't know how to cope with frustration and he doesn't know how to cope with disappointment. And you can take the skateboard away, but it's not gonna give him a chance to actually develop those skills. So what's gonna happen next time? Probably the same thing. So if you really want a behavior change, you have to make sure that you're teaching a replacement skill and punishment alone doesn't do that. So next. Punishment, if it's happening a lot, it does affect your relationship. Uh, your child might become less cooperative, might become less honest, uh, might decide to spend less time with you if you are trying to deliver a lot of consequences because your child keeps coming at you with unacceptable behavior. This, is, this can really, really backfire. Um, I was trying to think of an example to give you and I thought back to my days as a high school student as a very disorganized but basically well-meaning young woman. I was supposed to hand in my costume after the school play was finished and the teacher was checking things off her list and she came to me and she said, you don't have it? And I said, no, I don't have it, I forgot it. Because I had no, <laughs> speaking of the previous point, I had no organizational skills at all. I had no way to remind myself. I just didn't have that system set up either in an agenda or in my brain. So she was furious with me and she said, come with me. And she walked me across the school. She made me walk behind her. And then she handed me off to another teacher. And she said, speak slowly to her. She's a little slow. Okay, well, was that an unpleasant consequence? Totally. Did I learn anything from it? No, it didn't make me a more organized person. It just made me think, She's a mean lady who's got some issues to work out and I don't trust her anymore. So that damaged our relationship. Um, you're a parent and you get to do lots of fun things with your kids, but if you're always in punishment mode, um, and if, like with many kids, 
one tends to lead to the other because they don't go along with the first one, so you escalate and you escalate. This is going to take up a lot of your time. This is going to take time away from the opportunities to actually hear what they're saying or practice doing the right thing. So let's go to number three. Um, sometimes we try to deliver a punishment. This could be parents. This is maybe not just you. This could. This definitely happens with schools as well, or even with the justice system. The consequence that we set up that we think is appropriate is not really a punishment. It could actually be uh, a reward. So, for example, um, let's go back to my very unruly high school days again. Um, I didn't always follow the rules. It was a Catholic school. There was a a uniform. I had trouble with the uniform. It, my socks would fall down sometimes, and sometimes that would result in detention. <laughs> so did I get detention? Yes, I did, yes. And what was detention? We went down to a very quiet wing near where the nuns lived, and they said, sit here. You have to miss your bus and come home late and sit in this quiet auditorium. And I thought, okay, cool. <laughs> I'll just sit here for a little while. And it didn't really, let's go back, let's review. It didn't teach me how to keep my socks up. It didn't really improve my relationship with my teachers. And it, it wasn't that unpleasant. It was actually, you know, I didn't, it was kind of cool to get detention. And, you know, it was like a badge of rebellion. So sometimes we think we're setting up something like, oh, you're going to learn from this one. And it can totally backfire. You might even find that the behavior starts happening more because instead of decreasing and discouraging, it's actually setting up a reward. So let's not do that. Okay, so those are the big three reasons why, with most kids, punishment can backfire. However, there's two more that you need to know that are specifically related to kids with neurological differences like ADHD, or kids where you're seeing a lot of oppositional defiant disorder, you're not sure why. So let's look at number four. Specifically with kids with ADHD, we know that they don't plan ahead very well. We know that they tend to be very impulsive, that they tend to choose behaviors that, or they tend to choose outcomes that have higher risks. So you can punish them, but that kind of then goes into the past, and the next time the behavior comes around, what's going on for that child? Does that child tell you, oh, I remember what happened last time you told me I had to go to my room if I poked the cat. I'm not gonna do that again. Do you see your child going through that process or do you just see it happening again, like impulsively? Your child probably didn't think three steps ahead or three steps back to remember the punishment. So you end up just repeating the loop over and over again. This is a question of maturity. This is part of brain development it's not just about learning history. You can punish over and over and over and over again. It might not make a difference unless that maturity is there, unless that readiness is there. Some kids just don't really learn from consequences very well because of how they're put together. So if you have a child like this, I hope you're kind of breathing a sigh of relief. Like, oh, okay. So the answer isn't necessarily be more consistent, choose harsher punishments, um, have more rules. Those can be good things, but if your child is in that system and failing, this might be why. Okay, last point, um, and this was so interesting. I discovered this when I was reading a bunch of research papers on ADHD and how children might be more or less sensitive to punishment. Guess what they found? They took a bunch of people with oppositional defiant disorder and ADHD and they put, put them in a situation where if they made a mistake, there'd be a punishment. So in this case, it's a, it's a computer game and you press the button and it blows up the balloon and it's different colors of balloon. Some balloons will pop if you blow them too much, right? So the test was comparing typical kids with kids with ADHD and ODD. Oh, if the white balloon pops after like five pumps, do I change my behavior on the next? So they tested two things. The kids with ADHD and ODD, guess what happened the next time they got a white balloon? They didn't react and learn as well from, the, from their past experiences. So they were likely to just rush into that punishing response because they, they would lose a point if the balloon popped in the game. 
And what's even more interesting to me is biologically, they were actually testing their skin. They did this thing called a skin reactivity test and they measured it. And the levels of like things we associate with stress, like, oh, oh, um, when we become more alert to things, we have skin reactivity. Kids with ADHD and ODD had less skin response. Like that's a behavior. We don't think of it as a behavior, but it is. It's, it's just our body doing something. Um, and they seem to just notice less when a punishing behavior is happening. So you can see how we're really setting ourselves up if we get trapped in this mindset where I see a behavior that I want to change, I better come up with a consequence. If we go right there, we're going to get, we're going to fall down on even all five of these these points. Our kids aren't gonna be as re responsive to it. They're not going to learn from it as quickly. They might not remember or plan to avoid it. They might just start avoiding us. They might remember the, the punishment but not the lesson behind it. Um, they might not learn the appropriate behavior and, or we might accidentally be setting it up as a reward without realizing it. So, okay, I want you to be really aware of all these things. Um, but you might be asking like, what do we do instead? <laughs> That's a whole other video because punishment is easy. It's so cut and paste. You do this, I do this, <laughs> problem solved. However, we are in the business of teaching kids to self-manage and we're in the business of teaching kids maturity and perspective and that is hard. What do we do instead of punishing? Mm, we can talk about how to kind of calm our own feelings when we see the disturbing behavior. That's another video. Um, we can also think, once we're calm enough, we think, okay, what's going on? What's triggering this behavior? Like, what's the environment right now? What do I notice? What's making this behavior happen now and not before? What do I want my child to do in this situation instead? Oh, I, I really don't want him to play with his brother that way. I don't want her to scream when she's upset about something. I, instead, what do I want her to do? So rather than trying to decrease, let's focus on increasing something else. Oh, uh, rather than doing this, um, let's think of two other ways you can get that need met. Then it's a win-win. And finally, what can we do to make it a little bit easier for our child to give us that behavior that we're looking for? What kind of reminders do they need? What kind of visuals do they need? What kind of practice do they need? What kind of game do they need? What kind of encouragement do they need? We can do all this stuff. It's it takes some thinking, but it's so much more rewarding than go to your room. Because what are we learning? What are we teaching? Um, I hope I've made the case here. If, if I've left anything out, if I've been a little controversial, I hope you'll let me know. I hope you'll give me a chance to kind of explain if I've said anything that you disagree with. If you know somebody who needs to hear this, I would love it if you shared it. That would that would just thrill me to bits because I see so much damaging material out there about how you should treat your kids and all these parents and children kind of trapped in this really unproductive relationship. So if there's anything that you can do to help me get this message out, I would love it so much. Okay, thank you so much for listening. Bye.